SFJ 4x4 Studios presents in my in my oversized four-wheel drive Jeep. A Jeep podcast starring industry experts. Pure monosity. <laughs> what what? Say that again. With mad scientist Scott Brown. Use my drill press as a sort of lathe. Our host, Neil Simpson. If one light goes out, they all go out. Filled with shenanigans. We, we are really professional with Jeeps. This is I Speak Jeep. Oh, good. Nope, not yet. Now. Now, good morning, Jeep family. And welcome to the SFJ 4x4 studio in balmy Conneaut, Ohio. I am the host of I Speak Jeep, Neil, with uh, Simpson Family Jeeps, and... Mad Scientist Scott Brown slash Auto Restorer slash Hat Provider... <laughs> what hat? Slash shoveler. <laughs> Didn't you add something else to Taxi your list company? last week? Taxi company. <laughs> Taxi company to our, our uh, to our videographer, uh, who's who's and my wife. Trailblazer did yeah. not blaze any trails no, this morning. No, it's done. Didn't you say you added something to your 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 title to last week? week? <laughs> I'm going to add something every week. Oh my gosh! Um, if you are sitting at home in your warm and cozy space, you should um, stay there. <laughs> you should stay there. Um, obviously, if you're uh, from across the country, you might not be experiencing snowstorm Izzy. When did they start naming snowstorms? And Chip, I, Chip noticed your headwear. It's delayed for some reason this morning. Oh, good morning, good morning, Chip. I, you know, <laughs> the headwear have, is. Yeah, I thank my wife for that. She'll be so excited. She's at work right now, not serving any customers because <laughs> nobody they can't get, can get to the grocery store. Right. But, uh, she'll be very excited to see our hats. And she just saw these and she thought, uh, yeah, they should do this. Yes. That's very sweet of her. <laughs> I'll have to make sure we thank her, apparently. <clears throat> uh, once again, my wife will not be watching. Yep. Um, per usual. I did drive her Jeep in to work today. Yep. Thank God she's a teacher and didn't have to go anywhere today. Yeah, yeah, which is one of my favorite days of the year. Uh, if you're watching live, it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And um, really important day to me uh, and and friends and family, close family. Um, so we hope that you are uh, celebrating accordingly. Say some nice words to somebody. Uh, maybe you do or don't know. And uh, we can uh, honor Dr. King's legacy. So, um, But your wife is in. And all these is supposedly open. They have been open for an hour with zero customers. Oh, see, uh, so I, I drove in and uh, again drove the wife small crawler. And as Scott had posted, if you're on uh, our social media at all, you know that his all-wheel drive Subaru, uh, stuck his wife in the driveway, stuck in the driveway with snow tires. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it, you need ground clearance for this snow. Yeah, if it's you, wet. She was know. plowing. She probably was plowing the ground. Yeah, there's there's an imprint of the car wherever she tried to get it, and I just was like, okay, if you get traction, just get it back in your spot and leave it there, and it'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> 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 and luckily, the you know three and a half inches lifted on thirty sevens. I just drug pumpkins everywhere, but the didn't actually touch the jeep. So. For sure, and for sure, mud tires for the win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a oh, so Jens is running. If you're not familiar with Jens, or on our social media, she's on uh, she's on two and a half inch rock crawler, but she's got the fishbone high clearance flare, so we've got clearance for days. Yep. And uh, uh, Cooper STT Pro tires, which is a really popular one we sell. So we we are a product of what we sell. Yep. Um, and I just did the whole hour and ten minute commute in this morning. Uh, with a warm a warm tush and a warm heated grip and you just put the lever in before you move the jeep put the pulled the lever in <laughs> and 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 just just you know slow but steady made uh made our way up today yeah. um and it was a it was it was actually pretty nice it was nice to to be like hey i'm that guy <laughs> you know yeah there's a lot of people driving today that shouldn't be driving there was this tiny uh tiny little blue shoe box you know, i mean with with 13 inch wheels just spinning best they could out here on route 20. um i i think uh you were sharing you actually had an interesting encounter this morning yep so so uh i got up at five o'clock or something this morning my wife will totally be throwing me under the bus but she can't do that right this second so we'll be okay oh yeah right you can say whatever you want yeah so they, we know that they're not watching I, I know i got to her store at 6 15 so it was sometime in the five o'clock hour <laughs> 
And uh, her car was stuck. We got it back where it was supposed to be. I tried to plow with my four-wheeler. That was a no-go. That was a no launch. No, no, no for launch. Ten ten hard pass. <laughs> uh, that immediately got stuck. Uh, no enough ground clearance for the four wheeler. Put it back in the in the garage with the thirty six. They can keep each other company while it melts off. Mm-hmm. And uh, fired up my JK and said, "Well, we'll see if this gets out." And it promptly scampered through the driveway like it wasn't scampered no big, any problem. Scampered. So we went in and woke up my two children. It much early for them and yeah. uh, put them in full snow suits and stuffed them in their car seats in the JK. And we got Why up- were they in snow suits in the JK? Was uh, this just a worst, worst case scenario planning? I have no answers. You weren't in charge of that. I was not in charge okay. of that. I was <clears throat> shoveling. Okay. okay. So uh, they come out, and, and my poor daughter, she is not the biggest child if you haven't seen her. And it's I'm going like, to refrain from comment on that one. It's so deep on her. She's. <laughs> It's like she almost disappears, but she's in this bright pink snowsuit. <laughs> so we stuff her and, and my my son in the Jeep, and we get up the Route 20 from my road, and my wife goes, See, this is why we're just taking the Jeep to Aldi today, because there's not a road there. It's just no road. This, a drift. So <laughs> we go in on in the, in the, there, drop her off. We go back to the house for like a half an hour, and then I go back to my mother-in-law's. And on that trip, I get in the Ashtabula, and I start encountering walkers, People actually walking in the road. Good for them. And it's only a, a nile wide oh, at yeah. this point. So it's a path. It's a foot it's just path. a path. So that was interesting. And then there was a, a dark colored third gen Camaro on like 17 inch rims, completely sideways in the road. With that's, this a, guy just, that's a great car to have out today. Oh, perfect. And he's standing by it, looking at traffic, going, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And there's this line of four wheel drive trucks going around him. Going around him, going around him. For those watching, uh, third gen is what about about uh, what year? That's eighty two to ninety three. Oh, I was thinking that was I was. You know, I'm glad you said something because because <laughs> the story I have about the Camaro guy is oh, newer than that. Newer than that. So there's two. Two what? It's two of them then. Yeah, there's two guys in rear wheel drive Camaros. That's not a good choice. They <clears throat> they they're they're sticking it out there. That's what they're you doing. Get a Jeep. <laughs> she get a Jeep. They're committed. <laughs> they are committed. Yes. That's die diehards. Diehard GM yeah. Camaro. And we have some friends that are diehard GM. Oh, we do. Camaro. He people. was out in his Jeep. He was had a Jeep. He had his Jeep out. <laughs> he is a he is a Jeep Cherokee. Actually, the old man Jeep. It was yes. one of my one of my horde that that called off. Yep. And he he took it under his carrying wing. He did. Um, semi restoration on it. Oh my gosh. Yep. Yeah. He 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 took care of that. Yep. Pulled his work van out. I saw this morning. Yep. We'll have to find that picture because the work van's you know buried up to its shoulders, oh. and here's the jeep tugging I, out I, the. I did try to be a good neighbor on my way to my mother-in-law's and ask. It's funny. I'm shoveling and I hear vroom, beep, beep, beep. What's vroom? Beep, oh, beep, like a work beep. van. And I look across the street, and the guy it's he he works on uh, fork trucks. Oh, sure, sure. And he's at the front of his at the mouth of his driveway, back and forth. Back and forth. <laughs> I go up and I roll down the window. I was like, um, I can pull you out in the road if you want. He's like, where would I go when I got there? <laughs> That's good. Valid point. I'll valid leave you point. be. That's right. You do your I thing, man. Good, I was a good neighbor today. You know, I follow the work fan in. I want a, a big shout out to all of our, our, our service providers out there who are going out to do your job. I mean, it's... Yep. Of course, I, I talked to a, a industry partner on my way in this morning, had a, a quick chat with him. And, you know, we're talking about we live in snow belt area. Yep. Uh, it's not like this is the first time we've ever seen snow. This is not Texas I of think, last year. I think some people you know? were very surprised this morning. Though. <laughs> but, I, I mean, we've been talking about this this potential snowfall for a week now, yeah. you know. And I just thought, I mean, well, what do you think was going to happen? Are you just going to wish it away? Yeah, but a big thank you to the service providers, so, you know, plumbers, electricians, carpenters, all those co- those snow people. Snow truck drivers. Snow truck. A big thank you to our plow truck drivers and and salt and I mean, I, the American spirit is alive. I saw a lot of people out with shovels, just walking, oh, shoveling, I got and the most enthusiastic Jeep the way what? this morning. I'm, Stop okay. it. <laughs> And he was just like every show. Yeah. Right he did a big Jeep wave. Oh, I was like, he was yeah. like the brethren. Yeah, the brethren he was unite. Very excited. He's he's very happy with his Jeep. That's right because now. the only vehicles on the road this morning were Jeeps. Yeah, it's that's and, true. And trucks. I mean, we actually commented no, that. No, no, no. On, but on, not big trucks. On the on ninety on my way in, 
the only vehicles that were on the road were not on 90 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were in the city. They were parked squarely in the median in the grass Absolutely. off to the side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those of you who are may or may not be uh, aware, I live uh, currently in Meadville, Pennsylvania, and uh, there's a lot of hills and mountainous areas. And by 10 o'clock last night, the reports were coming in because of freezing, the freezing rain, and vehicles were apparently trying to traverse these hills, and they were just kind of like boom. And so I guess I understand there was a series of trucks and cars just piled up on the side of the road. That's fine. And I, you know, I don't think they're not coming out anytime soon. No. You know, so. No. Um, <clears throat> For, for those of you who are at home enjoying yourselves, uh, do enjoy yourself. Uh, for those of you out, you know, working, thank you for thank you for braving the elements. Yep, for sure. So, um, going on uh, on social media when it's not a dumpster fire. Yep. Um, there's the ten year challenge. Yep. Was really popular recently. Oh, so that picture coming onto the screen now. <laughs> it's almost ten years. It is. Yep. It's just shy of ten years. Yep. And um, that's our our boys. There. Is that live right now? It's live. Yeah. So it's just shy of ten years. But I thought that was too good. I found that in yeah. my uh, I found that in my my hoard of pictures. That's, that's and uh, that's from when we were packing in this this specific building that we're in. Yep. And uh, there's right, a wall there now. There's a wall there. There's walls and lights, and if you come in, that's right in the showroom area. And you can sit in that seat. You can sit in that bench seat. Pick yep. that up at a show out in uh, PA Albridge, Jeep, Jeep show. Yep. But there's our there's our baby boys yep. sitting next They're to each other. slightly bigger now. Slightly. <laughs> slightly bigger. <laughs> uh, and, and at some point in time, we will uh, – I'll make sure to provide – you know, somebody on the social media end of things, the the series of pictures we have here, because at some point in time, we think it's a wise idea to 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 step away from our, our boys, oh. our, our infantile children. Yeah. And we're going to let them sit on the couch by themselves I in the series of pictures. pictures or something. Right. So my wife is the one who's taking the pictures um, that I, I could, you know, I saw that later on in the, the pictures. But <clears throat> but in true fashion, uh, your your baby boy rolls away like a pumpkin and was it my kid it's your kid oh, okay there's a there's a series of pictures where it shows him cl- uh slowly roll on the chair yeah, he's fine he's fine he's good what was it? mark mark is uh wondered if you're going in today uh i knew you can <laughs> figured but why bother we bothered my wife snow spotted national weather service we officially got 15 inches as of 7 30 this morning my driveway had 21 inch drifts and had a drift on my patio that is 28 inches deep so far. Nice, nice hats. Yeah. Uh, he, Amy's going to, you know, kudos Love to Amy this. again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's about how tall my daughter is. <laughs> Get out of Stop it. <laughs> Poor Evie. Yeah. Um, so why, why bother? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to address that. Not, not any problem. Why bother? Because we need to do the podcast. Yeah, that was, that was our battle cry. That's our battle cry. We are yep. here. We drive big Jeeps. And uh, yep. I, I, we wanted to come to you folks and all three of you who are watching, uh, not my wife, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and share the joy of Jeep, Jeepness, not yes. Jeep Miss, which yes. is still making its rounds. And people are still reaching out to me uh, on Jeep Miss information. And I mean, the song was amazing. The, it was debatably it was. amazing. It was. <laughs> it's, it's deba- deb- debatably. Um, but yeah, we wanted to bring that that awesomeness of of the Jeep podcast, the I Speak Jeep podcast, to you, and uh, figured you'd be home. You need something to do, so yeah. tune in and watch us uh, wear silly hats, which I had no idea about. I was not prepped. It was I was I, yeah. I showed was up. Secret. It was here. Put this on your head. Yes, it's not even relevant. It's da- the new year. It's a turkey. Davy and uh, Jeff were sworn to secrecy. They are Christmas hats. I apologize, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you have you have lights and have garland lights. on yours. Yes, I do. My kids got a pair too. She would do that to them. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I don't remember exactly who how that happened. But any which way, maybe we should talk about jeeps. Yeah, maybe. Huh? Interesting. Um, in 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 all in all, and we have uh, we have we have teased that we were going to talk uh, about gas or diesel options. Yep. But I'm gonna side. I'm gonna sidebar that one more time. Okay. And we're gonna talk about axles and bigness because I feel like that's okay. fitting 
to this uh, to this to particular today. day, <laughs> right? It's going to be fitting to this particular day because yeah. Kevin's going to be so mad at you guys. I know. I don't know. Kevin said he was going to be joining us. I'm sorry, um, Kevin. Via via Facebook Live, and I'm not sure where he's at or why he's not. He's he was buried to be... in the snow somewhere between here and Michigan. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's probably true. <laughs> one of his one of his uh, his his Jeep is outside, ready for some long arm goodness. If yep. unfamiliar, uh, he affectionately called his Jeep or. The name came to him to call it Artie, which was actually uh, long for R and D, uh, research and development, because it's a JL that we've had the pleasure of working on for like almost three years now. I was yeah. looking back through pictures, and uh, lots of firsts, lots of firsts, too many firsts. Yeah, but he's a trooper. Yep, and um, he keeps trying new things and. Uh, we keep experimenting, and so we're actually going to be long arming a. I think he's a 2019. I think you're right. I think he's a 2019. It's a really early 19. Right, late 18, 19. Uh, J L U R, uh, and we're going to be using Iron Rock Off Roads Rock Link kit, and um, so his Jeep's been, you know, been lifted for eons, and he's played with different componentry, and we've learned a lot about. <clears throat> Adjustments and adjustments and routines. and absolutely and he's helped us along the way and so now we're going to be furthering that and that Jeep is on thirty sevens I believe came in on like thirty fives and he's on thirty sevens now I think you're right so um, to run those big to run those big tires yep. and so this is one of the big arguments debates. Um, all the kind of stuff that you can get lost in on social media. You'll you'll pull up YouTube, and there's going to be a you know ten different dissenting opinions, and then uh, even worse if you post to Facebook, and they say, "What's the biggest tire I can run on my stock axles?" Yep. And uh, and then of course with the advent of the uh, both the JK and then the JL, we still use the Insignia Dana Thirty. Yep. For our front axles, but it, they actually literally broke the mold on Dana 30. So one of the things I always share with people is that the Dana 30 has l largely been in production since the uh, early 70s. It's 73, I think. I, I I agree. It's in that. It's right in that area there. Amy's Wagoneer has a 30 in the front, and it's the first year for it. Okay, first year for the wagons. I was I know the Dana 27 front axle, which is very, very, very similar to a Dana 30. Very similar. Um, is up through the late 60s, somewhere in that ambiguous uh, Kaiser AMC-ness AMC is, yep. is this transition of axles. But anyway, so we have a Dana 30 produced in the early 70s. It is not the same Dana 30 that is under or potentially under your JK or even your JL. Yep. It's just vastly different animals. Diff cover is about where it stops. The diff cover and the dimension uh, of the ring gear is 7.5 inches. I, that's fine. <laughs> Roughly 7.5 <laughs> inches. And uh, <clears throat> and that's the that's the only similarity. Yep. The only similarity is the diff cover bolt pattern and uh, and then the diameter of the ring gear or the the size of the ring gear, but not even the, the metallurgy or the cut of the teeth or anything like that is the yep. same. Completely different. Completely different. So we have the advent of these, the JKs and the JLs, and we have these new axles brought to light. And, of course, with that comes the Rubicon axles. Because, of course, we had Rubicons yep. and front 44s. You want to you wanna take the TJ? Uh, so that was 03 to 06. Yes. And uh, they actually made a locker uh, 44, but then sadly they only made it a center chunk. The tubes and the knuckles and all that stuff was still from the 30, uh, which made it was very small. And it was low pinion on top of it, which, again, uh, doesn't make it the strongest 44 out there. And then they used an air locker, which can uh, cause some issues. They had a very low PSI Exceedingly um, low PSI. Like three or four PSI Absolutely. is all it was. And it was an air pump that's proprietary to the Jeep. To the Jeep. And I, they mounted it in the belly pan. The worst place. Like, yeah. it, it just in the schmutz. So Always. as people are, are using their Jeeps, it was just in the schmutz so, constantly. So those have a, their inherent issues. And then in... Uh, there's a lot of people dedicated to them. Don't get us wrong. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people... flame, but that... It, uh, they, people will be, it's a great Jeep. It, you know... It, and it is. It is. But uh, it's, it's a great... A, you know, milestone uh, allowed all the other stuff to happen. But in 07, they decided to completely 
uh, re-engineer and, and learn from their mistakes, go with an electric locker uh, factory, mm -hmm. and actually went with a high pinion 44 and beefed everything up. So we have a high pinion 30 and a high pinion 44. Yep. It's important to know. 44 yep. is only in the, uh, the Rubicons in yep. the front. Yep. Rear axles all were 44s, but there is a Rubicon and a non-Rubicon 44 for the rear of your JK. But overall, they just said, hey, we're, we're going to do a thing. Yep. The and, Jeeps are uh, getting bigger, heavier. Mm. Yep. They kind of did some learning from the Grand Cherokee uh, that got bigger and wider, and they tried to put and a 30 in the front of that. And it, we love the we love the Dub J Grand Cherokee, yep. and, and as we've mentioned before, Scott had one. Yep. Um, we have some good wheeling stories of that, but uh, that Grand Cherokee was was wide and heavy, yep. and all they did was extend the axle tubes, yep. the internal components reasonably. There was something called a Super 30 yeah. uh, that was a factory esque option, but, but still low pinion. Yeah. They learned a lot of lessons. They learned a lot. They prototyped on the Grand Cherokee, in our opinion. Yes. Uh, that 99 to 03, 04. 04. Um, Grand Cherokee, they kind of prototyped. So if you're unfamiliar, that's what they did. Yep. And, uh, and so then they come out in 07 with a complete redesign, big, wide, heavy Jeeps, full frame, yep. and uh, bring out the, the 44s. So we have this natural progression of bigger, stronger, and, uh, and, and robustness necessary. And it goes without... Uh, too, we should say, It'd be pre-07, if you were putting big tires on your Jeep, they were 35s. Amen. Uh, it was Ooh. a lot of work to put a 35 on an XJ or a TJ or a YJ. Uh, you had, you know, four to six inches of lift at that point. And, ten. Or ten. I had ten <laughs> on an XJ. I had or, ten. That's, or or that's you no drop the Sawzall out and cut things. I had ten, and I did the whole pinch weld cut, and yep. then fold, fold and hammer. Yep. Uh, I I did it. I did. It. I had an eight inch. I had it was the Skyjacker eight inch rock ready kit. Yep. And of course, uh, because I have inchitis, I had to have the two inch pucks. Of course. Of course. Yep. And extended shackles. Yep. So that clearly took me to a full ten inches of lift and, on and an XJ. And to kind of live my dream, I you know built my XJ that I had. Uh, since sold, but on 35s, and it, again, was like 9 inches in the air or something like that. And the higher you go, the more modifications so many and problems. customs happens. Um, so it was very refreshing when, you know, in 07, suddenly it was, like, easy to put 35s you on You could do 2.5, 3.5 inches, and, three and a half inches and yes. 35s just fell onto just the Jeep. Just fell on the Jeep, and, and we're very capable as well, and you weren't breaking things every five minutes. And uh, like normal, if we're going to go that far, we got to go more. Go big or go home. Uh, yep. So at this point now, it's uh, the race to put 40s on your JK and, uh, you know, same on JLs. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd argue if you're serious, if you're really going to do some, uh, you know, the extreme, like it was when you were putting 35s on your TJ, you're putting 40s on it now. You are. Yep, that's the big push. And, I mean, even even just in the last two years, 41 to 43s have seeped into the scene. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Got to go bigger. <laughs> and there is yet this, this, this mixed conversation between 37 and 40, right? So there's 38s, there's a 38.5, there's a 39. Yep. Uh, BFG likes their 39, and, and a lot of JL owners follow that closely. Yep. Um, and so mainly we're seeing that done on the Rubicons. Um but we have a lot of people who just enjoy, Which you know, now have 33 stock. And they're, I guess they're going to come out with a Jeep stock with 35s. So, of course, we got to push. you got to keep pushing, the, okay, pushing the, the bar. I think the Recon comes stock with the 35. The Recon, now. the Extreme Recon does come stock with a 35. I saw somebody selling. So, so they ordered an Extreme Recon package because that's one of the primary ways. Very few of those on the, uh, on the market, you know, the used market right now. They order the package, and then they sell the tires immediately. Tires yeah. and wheels, because they're beadlock-ready wheels. Oh, wow. So they are the Mopar beadlock-ready wheels, to my knowledge, and um, $4,000. Wow. $4,000 for 35s and beadlock wheels. Now, don't get me wrong. That's um, a good deal. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but, I mean, holy cow, you just ordered the package. Um, now you're selling them. I, I don't know. Use it. You know, it's my thought process. It's the Jeep way. It is the Jeep way. So how do big, we do that? How do big, we get up to 40s? Big Lego kits. <laughs> the best. Yeah. The best. <laughs> so, I mean, in, in our opinion, we like to build for the long haul. Preventative and, building, I like to think uh, of it. You know, like this morning when I was in my uh, mother-in-law's cul-de-sac that was not plowed. Hmm. And my front of my Jeep starts doing this. And the snow is up to my rocker panels. Hmm. I thought to myself... 
I'm glad I have upgraded axles. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because this is when you joints break. Because, and, and just if this is your first time watching us, um, oh, Chip is, Chip is uh, chiming in that the uh, Extreme Recons come with 456s, yep. which is a great upsell. And uh, I, Little Birdie told me that uh, Chip and, and wife have, I believe, ordered a, uh, an Extreme Recon themselves, Ooh. is my understanding. Um, but with that, with that said, uh, uh, so the, the hopping, and if you were just joining us, what do you have in the front of your Jeep with your 37s? That's Very capable. So I have an Ultimate 44. It's an aftermarket trade axle that Dana sells. Mm -hmm. uh, bolts in place on JKs. Um, in my opinion, if you're going to run 37s, that is what you do. Uh, gets you uh, upgraded housing over and above the upgraded housing that's on a stock Rubicon. Mm -hmm. You get the uh, locker. You get alloy axle shafts. Um, all the brackets are bigger, and it literally bolts in the Jeep. Um, Important note, it's complete ball joint to ball joint. Yep. You're, you are supposed to reuse your knuckles. Yep. And uh, Unless you're Scott Brown. <laughs> your hub assemblies. Yeah, you're supposed to reuse your knuckles and hub assemblies. But I went um, bigger. You did, and because there's a handful of uh, it's Rancho Skyjacker and one more Terraflex, Terraflex yep. have a uh, an appropriate upgraded. high steer upgraded knuckle. Yep, it's nice. Figured well, it's all new as it is. Might as well keep going. So I went ahead and did that as well, and so I literally took out a perfectly fine functioning Dana 30 out of my Jeep and plugged in this 44, and then re geared the rear to yep. match. Yep, uh, with 488s. And I have no regrets. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And we are, if if you are, are not aware, we're doing a big LJ build in the shop right now. Big shout out to Greg, our, our performance and lead mechanic, who's uh, doing a Iron Rock off-road long arm, which is actually the same long arm lift that's on uh, Chuck Norris, my LJ. Yep. And um, with their Jeep, we are actually doing a JK axle swap, which yep. is very cool. And uh, we are using one of those Ultimate 44s in the fr in the front axle. Yep, and a, um, and a rear out of a 40 or out of a JK in a the back. Rear so out of a JK, and we've trusted it. Iron Rock has a trust because it is a triangulated rear axle. So yep. kind of a and it'll be on 37s. It'll be on 37s with as well. Box. Yep, very cool build. So if you're you're not aware that is happening, and you should jump in and follow, ask questions, look at pictures, so on and so forth. But the, um, the, the biggest thing, though, if you're going to go bigger than 37s, Dana yes. has your back, and they have crate 60s. Crate that 60s. That also bold in your JK and JL, and plug and play, and you have tons. And you have tons. And I mean, so so it's a great time to be alive <laughs> <laughs> it's a great time it's a great time to be a jeeper yes. so if you're not familiar with my story um of well many stories but one of the main things that uh pursued that helped me pursue creating much of this was i was trying to build 44s for that xj that i mentioned the 10 inch lift xj waggy axles i was trying to build waggy axles from like the 89 90 um jeep wagoneer yeah. grand wagoneer which for those that don't know is a low pinion dana 44 six lug walkouts 260 U-joints, was it? It was 260 U-joints, which is yep. a small U-joint if you're yep. unfamiliar. It's actually a downgrade. Downgrade, some. yep. Uh, but got you a lockouts and a bigger ring gear, so that was the thing you did. That was what you did. It was, you know, 20 years ago. That's just That was par for the course 15 years ago. Um, we Sad didn't have all these axle options. Sadly, we would have to find the Jeep in the field somewhere or in a creek and harvest this axle mm -hmm. and then inspect it for all of its poor life it's had at that point and rebuild it so at that point you've got a housing yep and maybe a diff cover if you're lucky <laughs> and it actually had um for 10 inches it had insufficient caster so i ended up in a race shop where they uh cut the cut the end yokes off um and then reoriented them so they, they jigged weren't up. excited they were not excited. They thought that was a terrible idea because they're a race shop. <laughs> yes. Um, but that guy, big shout out to that guy. He was in the north side of Pittsburgh. And he, I worked you know, closely with him for a little while. Like I said, uh, not excited. Did not think that was great. Um, but he did what I asked him to do. So that yep. was cool. And that's important. Yeah. And uh, from a lot, a lot of research and, and information, figured out what we need to do with these 44s. Yep. So uh, th this idea that years ago we didn't have these aftermarket options and I am an axle junkie and drive shaft junkie at my core. And um, so the pursuit of tons has always been, uh, you know, 
Yep. In my in my Kinda in like my, my gaze, my you horizon. Gotta, gotta do it on. It's on your bucket list. It's on the bucket list, right? So, um, a, a few years ago, that's what in uh, Chuck Norris. Again, if you're familiar, my my LJ is on tons. Uh, high pinion Dana 60 up front and a corporate 14 bolt rear, and I could go through all the specs that will make people's gla- eyes glaze over. Not necessary. Yep. Um, but I've done the what we affectionately refer to as junkyard axles or junkyard tons. That's how I made my... And how much of the original 60s in the... None. The housing. The housing. The housing. The housing. Both of them are simply housings. Um, and, and it's important to note as a professional. So I'm going to follow up with the fact that I have this Jeep. I've been driving it. It drives wonderfully. I can do 80 plus down the highway. Smooth as glass. Steers wonderfully. Um, and how long did it take you to... It, honest to Pete, it took six years, and now that's just because uh, I was also, you know, we were building the business, and yeah, um, you life know, gets in the way. Life happens, right? Had beautiful babies in but the we'll, process. We'll, we'll say three years. Be fair if you didn't have that distraction. Right, right, yep. right. Yep. Um, still a very involved process. Still an exceptionally involved process, and I'm going to say this just real clear: I don't recommend junkyard tons to anyone. No, nope. I know uh, they're cheaper. I get. We it. think they're cheaper. We think they're cheaper. That's the problem. So a long time ago, I learned, and I still have to learn this sometimes because you know we're humans. But uh, my dad told me a story. He says, "You want this thing? Yep. Okay, go out and find a nice one. How much does that cost? Well, it's expensive. I can go and buy this one mm-hmm. that needs all this work for this much, though. And and look all the money I saved. He says you'll have more than that in it when you're done. That's he's, true. He's not wrong. He's. Thank you, Fred, for, <laughs> for that, that piece of advice. 100% yep. true, right? Yep. Now, I understand that if you're doing it for the adventure of building tons, we actually hear that yeah. pretty often. If, People if say, you oh. and your kid in the garage, and you got a welder, and you're passionate, and you got three years. And you want to learn something? Do it. Have fun. Yep. There's a lot of, we work with some amazing manufacturers who make fantastic parts. TNT, R-Tech, yep. um, Iron Rock. You know, they make great conversion parts, trust parts, and they're out there to support. You know, any of our re-gear companies will make lockouts and kingpin kits and all that kind of stuff to rebuild these axles to their their grandeur. 36, you can get in it and live it and learn all the skills and all that sort of stuff, but that all takes time. And you got to buy tools and you got to learn how to do it or you got to rig stuff to make it work, that kind of stuff. Uh, We put my 44 in front of my JK and what? Afternoon. An hour? Yeah. Yeah, after work, you just dropped it in. Boop. Boop. And so the the ultimate 60s um, equally are billed as, uh, you know, bolt-in application. And the big thing about the 60s, they're going to come complete outer break. to outer. Break to break. Break to break. Yep. Front and rear. And they're going to be plug-and-play for our, our JKJL customers with your traction control, your ABS. Yep. Um, and they're just they're going to just flat out play nice. Yep. And that's where one of the big problems with junkyard axles in daily driven Jeeps of the JK and JL JT vintage. Trying to get everything to function the way it did when it left the factory is challenging. Very challenging. And that's where, you know, as far as doing the conversion and putting it into a TJ and older, those Jeeps don't really care. Yeah. You know, um, they, they'd like the speedometer to be correct for if you have an automatic transmission, but they don't care yeah. like the JK does yes. or the and JL or the, the JT. JL just made it more serious because then the Jeep can go into limp mode and be upset and all kinds of stuff can happen. Oh, my gosh. And I, I it's one of those. Mo- I remember my first limp mode. Uh, <laughs> no. um, and, so and and it's you know all that stuff's there for a reason. I know we all talk the game like oh uh, you know it, we don't need all that, which we don't. But it's nice, and that's why it's on our daily driver jeeps. So I gotta tell you, in Jen's Jeep this morning, I I appreciated the traction control was on in my in my mild commute in. Yep. And as soon as I was bogged down in the parking lot. Turn that bad boy off and and let her eat. You know, <laughs> yeah. opened up the gas and and let the jeep eat as it you know kind of dug through the three foot of of drift. Yeah. But you know, I was like, hey, well, that's not bad. I like the traction control. Stop me on the high on the road. You know, I, I I'm, I'm all pro pump 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 pump. But yeah, uh, the jeep just kind of does it for me. So yeah. yeah. Um. <clears throat> so needs to say. The, the, the ultimate 60 package is fantastic. Um, you know, the big thing is people, people talk about the price point. They're going to tip the scales between twelve and $15,000. Yep. That's just the reality of the situation. Your labor costs are going to be very low. Yes. So your labor costs, 
and then the immeasurable opportunity cost because as scott had mentioned they're just going to bolt in yeah. right so if you are building junkyard tons like i have done yeah. and and we've learned here as a as a company about this process i missed out on you know three plus years of wheeling, of, of wheeling and using my jeep now uh, granted, I had other vintage iron Jeeps to do fun things with, and, I, you know, we have fantastic customers who let me take their Jeeps Which out. Is, I mean, we probably would have done it anyway, but he did that stuff because he couldn't use his Jeep. He wanted to go wheeling in because it was in the garage tore apart. This is all true. This <laughs> so is all true. he spent more money to then have a Jeep to then go do stuff with that Jeep. Why, why are you trying to act so wise? <laughs> Why are you trying to act well, so wild? Well, it even gets worse. I know uh, a good YouTuber. He's very talented with fabrication, and he had a Land Rover that he built uh, Super Duty 60, mm -hmm. and he had to do all kinds of crazy customization. He made it all work, got it on the road, and immediately pulled it out, threw it away, and bought a crate axle. <laughs> so we had a we had a uh, industry acquaintance. And this was, again, five, seven years ago. And he said he had a perfectly running JK, and he ruined it by putting junkyard tons under it. So, you know, with that said. Real quick, Scott, your, your wife must be super busy today with all that snow. <laughs> oh, my. All, Hi, honey. Uh, good morning from Aldi's. I don't know if we should air that. Cut that one out. We should not indicate. <laughs> She's on break. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> this is her 15 minutes. <laughs> so I think she's getting accolades for just going in this morning. She so. probably is. She's a trooper. Yes. She's a trooper. Um, with that, so there are quite a few options for, for crate axles. And so Scott said the term crate axles. And we talked a lot about the Dana because we sell a lot of the Ultimate series, Ultimate 44s, Ultimate 60s. But there's, but there's other ones out there. There are. So it's important to note because we work with – uh, Dynatrack a lot on their pro steer ball joints. They've got a great design for high quality premium ball joints um, that are serviceable and rebuildable. We work a lot with Curry and, and obviously Terraflex, a very popular brand. And so we work with all these manufacturers and they all offer forms of bolt in um, crate axles. Crate axles. And, and ultimately, those other brands that we just mentioned are going to be. Um, perceived as more affordable. So their upfront cost is going to be less than the Ultimate Series, typically. Yeah. Um, and and they, they come with the cool box, though. They don't. They don't. So <laughs> the crate's worth something. The crate is worth something. <laughs> so uh, if you've ever been in our facility, you'll see crates everywhere. Yep. Um, they're awesome. They're very cool. They're hardwood, you know, yep. with a, a black spray paint. And if you, and, you get know. a crate axle from Dana... You get your crate. You we get to keep your we crate. We don't hoard those. No, you uh, you can turn it into furniture, which I understand Jeff is a, a master of making furniture out of them at this point. Um, his <laughs> wife keeps, you don't know. Why are you shaking your head, man? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, your wife likes outdoor furniture out of these crates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, last time we ordered a set of curry axles, they actually came in um, giant cardboard boxes on a pallet. That is no, exciting. No discredit to curry and their Very fantastic nice machining. Axle. Great axle. Yeah. Um, big shout-out to what they've brought to the industry. Um, but then it just came in a cardboard box. I mean, it is yeah. what it is. It's not as exciting. What they do <laughs> offer, really cool, if you're a JT customer, because JTs are arguably – um, they're pushing the limit on the bigger, heavier vehicles than we've than we've experienced before. Um, they are offering a one ton rear axle. It's a Dana sixty, but it's a low pinion. Now we could get into the vernacular of low pinion, high pinion, reverse cut, standard cut, so on and so forth. But the reality of the situation is that um, low pinion is an inherently stronger design in the rear in the back based on rotation okay so there used to be an idea that we needed a high pinion in both locations for for ground clearance and while that is still true if you are a hard rock buggy type customer um a the, the rear is weaker than the the rear is weaker because of its natural rotation the front you want a what's called a reverse rotation or a high pinion axle which again is standard on all of your jk's jl's and jt's at this point and um but the rear they're doing a low pinion 60 five lug so you keep your wheels and tires and this rear axle now has this monster carrying capability and strength. Did they ever do anything with the Dana 80 8-lugger? I know the their 
JT has it in the back. Curry or? Well, Dana. Well, so we're not supposed to talk about that. Oh, <clears throat> doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah. So <laughs> uh, if you do you know, the little birdie stuff, and, and they did release it. As a, as a like a prototype piece, but oh, to my okay. understanding, it's not actually available for the aftermarket. Um, they did have an axle builder program, which I, I never really saw immediately come up off the ground. There was just some initial purchasing um, in the industry. Uh, in the, their defense, they've been very busy trying to produce stuff for just regular stock Chrysler built vehicles. Absolutely, um, that is pretty much their bread and butter. Uh, this stuff's all kind of extra. And uh, if you have the, you know, the life some of us have led with COVID, you kind of got to focus on your your course. On your meat and potatoes. Yeah. yeah. And, and a big shout out to them and their manufacturing, both on their OE or their, you know, their, their parent company processes and obviously in their aftermarket, supporting the aftermarket. That's a big, that's a big task, yes, you know. It is. So, no, the 80 would be very cool. And there's a number of their, of their Jeeps. Uh, that do have 80s. If you follow, uh, you can follow Zach Heisley on Facebook and Instagram, and he's out running around doing some Ultimate Adventure, doing some Moab. They were out doing some snow wheeling. Uh, they did a JT that they took to SEMA last November, and they had tracks on it. Very cool stuff. They just took that out and did a photo shoot with it. Um, and I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it has an 80 in it because I don't know. To. I don't know if it still does. Well, I think one of their JTs did because I brought it up at one of our videos. You'll see uh, on our YouTube. Follow it down long enough uh, pre-COVID SEMA, um, and we we talked a little bit about ultimate axles. But so we have we have this this option here, right? Of yep. uh, of our of our tonnage to to really comfortably carry those 40s, and so. To, to kind of sum up or succinctly talk about, you know, the well, tire to axle. Why don't we just talk about the things you should upgrade because of the bigger tires? Oh, I, well, go ahead. So your strength of your axles, obviously. Uh, your brakes need to get bigger. Your bracketry needs to be thick enough to handle that extra mass. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have the proper amount of lug nuts to hold that size of tire sometimes. That would be nice. Um, and it's also nice to have a lockout or two to be able to uh, play with that sort of stuff. And that sums up, in a nutshell, what those crate axles get you for the that of the thing. You get bigger brakes, you get uh, you know proper bigger, lockouts and bigger brackets. Uh, the likelihood of of the weight of the rotating mass of the tire spinning, you know, way out from the axle is gonna. Yeah. You know, it's not gonna tweak it. It's not gonna rip off a stamped steel bracket. Yep. Um, because that is how the brackets are made on your thirty or Rubicon forty four axles. Yep. And um, you don't need to worry about trussing or gusseting and those kind of things. Correct. It's kind of ready to go right out of the box. One and done kind of scenario. Absolutely. And you have that peace of mind to be like, I know that I have all the beef under there yep. for that for that, uh, for that that big tire that I'm running. And so people will call in and say, well, first of all, let's address what we see on Facebook or Insta or name it. And, and they're going to say, well, can I put 40s on my stock Jeep? Yes. Yes, you can. That is that is a factual statement. You yeah. can you can pretty much do anything once. I yeah. mean, yeah. doesn't mean you want to doesn't mean you, you want to do it again. And tend to use it. And, Correct. And the method of which you use it. Correct. If you are a person who's aggressively wheeling, That's then it's not going to last. It's not going to last. No, um, I, I know a lot of people that aggressively wheel with tons and break their stuff constantly. Absolutely. And they just grin and bear it. They just fix it. Absolutely. And then that's where, you know, aftermarket, especially the junkyard tons. I mean, yeah. I know a number of people. Yeah, because then specifically, those are all junkyard tons, I believe. If we talk about my junkyard tons, my caster is never going to be what correct. It, what it should be. What it should be, unless I go through a very cost-effective, cost effective, cost prohibitive process of getting the Cs, the kingpin Cs, off of my axle and rotating them. And, and honestly, at that point in time... I should have just built it differently in the first place, yeah. you know? Um, and so there are inherent limitations to, uh, to, to the junkyard axles, to the core axle that you're starting with. Whereas these manufacturers have, have sat down, um, uh, we've sat down as an industry and talked about, hey, what makes a, a good axle good? Well, just like the things have, you said. They don't have limitations at that point. They have some, but they can kind of make it whatever they want it to be. It's kind of like somebody sat down and said, you can have your dream blah. You just draw it out. Yep. That's what they did with these axles. And they get to move. If the pumpkin would be better two inches to the right, 
they, they move the that. pumpkin. Yep. And they put it together. And if they're like, hey, you know, uh, I believe that curry axle, it was like a, a hybrid JK uh, XJ. So the curry axle well, we, is in question for us, was went into an XJ. Yep. And it was a hybrid TJ uh, XJ JK axle. Yep. It was amazing. Super cool. If I And I built, when I built my XJ, uh, when I bought it, it was a wreck. The world's heaviest Dana 30. And I built the world's Dana, heaviest Dana 30 because it had a low pinion, newer uh, Dana 30 in it. And its stock would have had a high pinion 30. So I went to the junkyard. I found an axle. And I reused the housing. And mm-hmm. everything else got thrown away. Mm-hmm. And we geared it to 410s because at that time I was never going bigger you than You were never going bigger than 33s. I swore on the Bible. Didn't happen. Ooh, Scott. <laughs> and I gracious. trust and sleeved it. And gusseted it. Yeah, trust sleeve gusset. You yep. made a boat anchor. Made a boat anchor. I used my cherry picker to put it underneath the Jeep because it was so heavy. Yep. And then I realized, well, then the ball joints aren't that strong. And then this is that and that and that. And I was like, if I had to do it over again, I just buy the Curry 44 and been done with it. Yeah, super cool hybrid axle there. Yep. And with the LJ job we were doing, that's what we had planned on doing was that Curry hybrid axle for the for this LJ. But then uh, that particular customer um, is a, they're a super good sport yeah. and um, reasonably husband-wife team, and they're super fun. And the mad scientist streak of me and Greg came out. Yes, and, <laughs> and, and we all went home for the weekend after quoting them, you know, quoting them out the, the, you know, the hybrid front axle and keeping their 44 and building it, because it was an LJ, stock with 44 in the rear, and uh, we all came back the next, you know, the next week, and it was like the light bulb went off, yep. you know? We all had the same answer. And... We and should. I was like, I was thinking about it, and you guys confirmed it because they were both hot on it. I was like, hey, we got to do JK axle swap on this LJ. Yeah, make it different. And then we get that experience, too. And I think in the future, you're going to see a lot more of that. Absolutely. Um, it's sort of a junkyard swap, sort of not a junkyard swap. It's like the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just lends itself nice to it. You know, everybody I know that has, you know, that era Jeep. They always put wheel spacers on it to get, to get their stance out. Absolutely. You're getting that right out of the gate with the 30, the JK axles. So that's one big plus. The brakes are bigger on the JK than the stock brakes on the LJ. So mm-hmm. there you're upgrading. you got a high pin for 44, which never was an option on the, the LJ TJ platform. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to like about a lot doing of stuff. the swap. So, yeah, make sure that if you are on our social media, you check that out, ask questions about it. It'll be have some videos up on YouTube, and uh, you can follow along. And uh, that job is, is well well underway. Yep. So um, I think we've, we've talked a lot about one tons, unless somebody has questions. And of course, you're always welcome to reach out to us um, on our social media, on our, our Facebook page page uh if you're watching this on youtube you know make sure you comment below we do actively read those and typically respond in a timely manner you can email us uh both on our contact form on the website you find us at sfj4x4.com and you can put that inquiry in about axles or about tires and wheels to your axle usage as well um and you could uh Love to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. Big thing is you want to make sure um, that you're fitting your needs um, with these axle upgrades. So uh, not everybody needs to do it. I understand that. Yep. Um, but you are a person who's who's outfitted your Jeep with tons of armor, overlanding. Um, you know, you have an aggressive expectation or use out of the vehicle. Um, you might you might want to buy now and, and, uh, and, and kind of bear that burden and uh, just be done with it. Because yep. otherwise you'll be replacing, you know, a good number of parts, doing the maintenance game. Yep. Doing the maintenance shuffle. Yep. <laughs> All right. So here we are. Our clock is ticking down. Yep. We've ten year challenged ish. Yep. And we have to talk about um, what what should we anticipate for next time. So in the near in the new year, first of all, how are you doing with, with New Year stuff? Uh like my projects? Yes. Because we didn't talk about that. I actually worked on my car. Did you? <laughs> I tore my... I have a... Those that don't know, I have the stock engine that's still in the, the car, and you can't do a lot of things with that. Which so, is... What stock what in a 36? Uh, it's a 21 stud, 221 cubic inch, 85 horsepower, flathead V8. How many horsepower? 85. Well, that's better than the Jeeps of the era. Yeah. 
Okay. It wasn't 60 or 40. 40 but, something, yeah. Um, so I have a, a 46 through 47, 48 uh, motor that's a 100 horse stock. It's a 239 that I uh, got out of you know a horde of parts. Mm -hmm. And I broke that completely down over the weekend, um, checked all the measurements, found out it's 15 thousandths over stock bore just from where. Oh, it's had its it's had a life. Oh boy, uh, the it was a race car. <laughs> cranks over about uh, four to five thousandths, uh, not even centered. So it, it's looking like the crank might not live to see the next uh, build. Oh dear! But I got a good block from what I see. Um, so I got the valves all out of it. Learned how to do that. Pistons are out. Cranks out. Cams out. That's going to go off to the motor shop and get dunked and checked over. Mm -hmm. And then the the last thing I did because. That's going to be a very expensive build, and I kind of needed to be like, okay, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. I uh, put my uh, rear shackles in the Jeep over the holiday, and I had, or and not in the Jeep, in the car. Uh, started, you have to disassemble the spring to do that, and I actually put the spring back together and greased it all so it moved easier. and Felt accomplished. Felt accomplished. Get, got something done. Yay. <laughs> so so it's sitting, it's sitting on its suspension now. It's sitting on its suspension again. Uh, that's another thing, too. Uh, still learning. I decided I was going to use new old stock shackles and rubber bushings on, on this build. Mm. And 80-year-old uh, new old stock. N now I will tell you, they're not still in the chassis. I never drove it. I ah. never rolled it very far. They fell right apart. The rubber dried out over the time. And now they have brand new stuff. So Did you buy new old stock? Did you pay money oh, for these? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. That was eBay purchases. It was awesome boxes and you know all that kind of stuff, but then I still had to buy new ones. So <laughs> you learn from me, this, please. <laughs> this is like the junkyard axles this all over is the again. Junkyard axles all over again. You thought I'm you were doing, doing something doing real special. I thought I was doing something special. I was like, oh, you know, new rubbers, not like what old rubber was. Oh my Gotta god! I tell you, sixty-five or seventy-year-old rubber ain't what it used to be either. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, that is. That is fantastic. We're still, I mean, we do it all the time, you know, yeah. human nature, yeah, human nature. But uh, I love that you're, you're still running into it, you uh, know. It, it's just, you know, it's human nature to do that. And you just, no matter how many times you know it, you're going to do it. Right. right. Well, especially because you're, you're endeavoring into something new. With our Jeeps, obviously, yeah. we've, we've learned the ropes over the years. We have, you know, some, some specific supply chain uh, expectations and products that we use. But yep. you're learning something new. Yep. Um, the hard way. <laughs> the hard way. So if you're not uh, if you're not aware, you can um, uh, if you hey Larry yeah I we'll talk we'll talk soon. Um, he's just coming. He said he owes us a, a, a phone call. We'll take care of it. No worries. Um, yeah, you can follow my my old car hijinks on Instagram and on Facebook. Yes, uh, I do post updates of that. What's on your both. Instagram name? Uh, do you know? Nineteen thirty six Ford Crazy. Good. And. Uh, Good. We've come a long way because I think at like episode one we were no not sure of was. our Instagram posts and yeah. names. No, but we're gonna put them here. Yeah, you and, know. And again, it's always fun to watch because I see Jeep guys. You know, we'll do a podcast. We'll mention it, and a bunch of Jeep guys will follow me. Yeah. So that's that's fun. There's a lot more Ford early traditional hot rod stuff on that, but you, know, you it's do fun. So you do some Jeep things. You obviously yep. have the wagon. You've got Snowflake, the CJ7, the wife's. You've yep. got obviously your your tank. Yep. Um, my tank color JK. Your tank color JK. Yep. Uh, the XJ has gone on to a different home, but you and then you have a field uh, of of parts uh, Jeeps. Yeah. <coughs> which I, I, I may hear or may a lot not, of those are yours. Which I may or may not be part of. <laughs> Sorry, Amy. Um, and your neighbors may or may not appreciate, like when they see my big red ram coming in, yeah. you know, they might immediately call authorities <laughs> and make a documented claim. Yeah. But anyways, um, so yeah, you can follow that. And then obviously I attempt to be active on Instagram. I just have a really hard time getting into it. I but man, that's where all the cool kids hang out. I was. And I was I was posting some cool pictures that uh, have, have, you know, been done by uh, our our production our audio visio guys visio uh he's gonna get he's gonna get me for that he's totally yes, i am audio visual <laughs> that's, that's guys already in process oh now. man that is in jeff's brain he's gonna be like oh right i'm gonna make a remix right now yeah, there's a time stamp on that one <laughs> so posted some pictures because we got cool jeep stuff and uh and obviously that's you know i want to share that with people and um 
You know, so it's uh, that Jeep guy, 55, it's, I think. I don't know. It is. But okay. It's a cool Thank time you. for the shop. I mean, right now we have everything from a 64 CJ5 in here to the LJ build, you know, CJ7s here. We got a, a Willys M38 we're doing a full frame off on. Uh, of course, our CJ5 rebuild, the 78 CJ5, it's not a restoration. Yeah, hashtag not a restoration. <laughs> yeah, at this point, it's just a frame. Uh, so there's a bunch of exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah, last week process. I took the, one of the big trucks out and got all from our, our commercial sandblaster. And so we had these big, beautiful, uh, big, beautiful bare frames. And you actually did some phenomenal repair work on yeah. them already. I'm really proud of that. Yeah, so. working on getting them ready for paint and, and the final reassembly stuff and scaring mouse nests out of Jeep yeah if you're if you're <laughs> unfamiliar you can see the uh scott blowing out a, a mouse nest that probably been packed up in there for 10 years yeah, and I, don't worry i found more we gotta do it again <laughs> oh dear bits and pieces were like hitting me in the face i was yeah. ducking and weaving while trying to video yeah so last piece uh before we we move on hey scott lindquist you made sure to say hi and, and, and he's enjoying the show um you had mentioned paint mm -hmm. and so uh, you know, as far as the paint shop that we work with, they're doing a, he's doing a great job for us. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the paint on the uh, hashtag not a restoration. And then we're going to briefly talk about the paint colors that are on the market to tease for next week. So tell me about the paint on the hashtag not a restoration. On the paint on the body or on the frame? Oh, tell me about the body because that's, that's, that's pretty. So the, so the body, it's really cool stock. It was that such a 70s 80s like root beer brown color that that we, was very kind of you to call it root beer brown i mean <laughs> i'm, I'm just gonna to be nice i'm just on, gonna on there camera. are people who love that though oh totally there are there's a and, and i will say everyone in our age bracket knows had a family member or, yeah. or knows someone that had a truck or a jeep or a car that was that color. I want to know what engineer, what marketing person was like, looked at the color palette and was that like, one. that one. My dad had an 85 K10 that was that color. Uh, you know, Fall Guys truck was yep. that color. Yep. All kinds of good memories of that sort of stuff. I but, mean, our house was growing up. The inside decor was all that color, too. Yes. Or green. Or one green. Of, <laughs> one or the yeah. other. And then, or, and then it's randomly yellow. Yeah, that, that, like my that, parents' that uh, pale, appliances. That growing. pale yellow, pale, pale, pale yellow yeah, was, yeah, was also. My mom's linoleum and, and uh, the stove and refrigerator. Was your color. dad's K? Was your dad's K truck tan interior as well? It was brown interior. Oh, it was brown as well. It was the 80s. Everything. Was I the love same that color. Scott <laughs> called it root beer brown. I, that's just so kind of you. Yeah. If you don't know when what color clean, we're talking about, if you've ever had, bad. if you've ever had babies and you change their <laughs> diaper. Oh boy. That's the color. That is the color of seven, late 70s you're, trucks, you're early 80s trucks. Again. <clears throat> anyway, so he chose this awesome factory green color with all this metallic. It's got some gold in it and stuff. When the light hits it, it just lights up. And uh, it, we, how we're it's doing hot. this Jeep it's we're, is very close to the way the factory painted it. So it's completely assembled. Hood, fenders, grill, uh, all that stuff. Tailgate hinges are in place. And uh, the roll bar bolts through the side of the tub on that vintage. So we actually got the roll bar painted first, put it in, and he's going to back tape that we'll off. We probably have a picture of that we'll post here. And uh, drove the, like, blew the customer's mind because he oh, was, was not gorgeous. expecting to see it in the steel. Yep. And he just lost. <laughs> he just went crazy. And the thing about the roll bar is it's round. That's oh, a hard and paint it lights job. up. Oh, yeah. And the grabs the sheen of the light yep. spectacularly. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous and unique. Yep. Um, and we're doing Renegade decals. So it, it will really pop. It will be a nice, nice But it's build. not a restoration nope. uh, for his wife, who is definitely going to watch some of this. Yeah. Not a restoration. <laughs> yep. um, Lots of originality there. <laughs> And you actually did an amazing tire carry, which there's some video out on that as yeah. well, if you're into the vintage iron stuff. Um, and again, as we mentioned, we've got the big JL long arm going on here in the near yeah. future. It, it's really cool. As I get to do what I really enjoy to do, and Greg's doing what he enjoys to do. And he complains a little bit about it, but he loves the, the puzzle, the, yes. to figure out how to yeah. make all those pieces work. And he wants the right fit, fit and finish, uh, just like I do. I want things to function and, and operate. And uh, like this tire carrier, I really hope that at some point it's at a show and somebody goes, you know, is that factory? Right. Then I did my job. 
yep. that's what I want to do. If you're not familiar with our business model, and 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 I I could yammer on about business specifically for for forever, but um, ultimately uh, we work with a very unique process. The SFJ four x four difference is like I like to call it. We educate, we document, and we make the customer happy. And through that process. When you come in for service specifically, not the retail sales or the counter sales, um, which we, we do want to help you with as well. We really want to, to yeah. be that resource for we, you. We sell parts. <laughs> we do sell parts. Um, <clears throat> but when you come in, you actually basically you, you work with me uh, typically kind of in a direct capacity. And then you get a builder, which is very cool. And, and you'll, you'll know that guy's name and you'll know a little bit about him. And he could be Scott. He could be Greg. Um, and he can be even Jeff, who's he's here behind the camera. Um, and so then we work through the process and we try to, we try to be very succinct about the vehicle, um, and not have a bunch of hands touching it though. We all do have specialties, um, which will benefit, you know, high quality builds. So, um, that's why Scott works a lot on the vintage iron. He's very capable to go over and do the performance stuff. And likewise, Greg has done vintage stuff in the past. Um, but always bouncing ideas off each other without question. And, you know, we're all part of it. Uh, you know, we're in it because we love it. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. Very passionate about it. But we were talking about paint and uh, Jerry's fantastic job on the paint color. Yep. In the future, we're going to be talking about hot paint jobs, right? We're going to be talking what's cool, what's not. Um, obviously, if you've heard the rendition of the 12 panes <laughs> of Jeep Mess is what I'm going to call it. Um, you'll hear uh, Tuscadero, yep. which obviously uh, is a really, really hot color at the moment. Um, but also kind of one of the funny things is, uh, our very own Jeff, his Jeep was on display at Bantam 2021 and his is the hydro blue big shout out to, uh, BJ BJK blue Jeep crew. Um, and, uh, which I'm part of because of old blue, very passionate group, very passionate group. But so we have this hydro blue, um, you know, JKS suspension equipped, uh, 35 inch, uh, gladiator. <laughs> And two things. One, uh, people kept coming up about that and just gushing. Whoa, let me. I got passionate. I was moving the microphone <laughs> Don't around. Don't do that. Got, they were gushing over the color of his Jeep. I mean, it's a nice color. But yeah. Holy cow. They, they were passionate about it. And, and then his bug deflector because he's an old man because <laughs> he's a super old man. I, and if we would have had those, we would have sold a thousand of them. Yeah. I swear it. Yeah. That's because all of us had Papa or dad that had a square body chevy dodge or ford we're looking at you jeff uh, yeah but we, the difference is it's not the old school bug deflector that stuck up six inches no, and with had the, the little, little guy, guy with his it. little nose yeah. hanging over it it totally, should be you totally need a guy we with should a be nose. you should put a guy with a nose Those that might as well sell. be you know what but i'm i'm worried that if we take we we buy a bunch of uh we buy a bunch of those bug deflectors and we take them in this year uh, we're just going to sit on them. Yeah. That's how those shows. That's work. how it always goes. Never have the right product. Chip is Chip is offering to make sure that Tuscadero comes in, and I think that's the extreme recon Jeep. That's going to be a, just a gonna cool be a Jeep. Sweet Jeep. Yes. It's going to be a cool Jeep. I'm really excited to see. Uh, that absolutely, one. absolutely. And I promise, Chip, we're going to put those uh, Rock Slide Engineering sliders on your Jeep someday. One of these I, days. I told at the same time that I put them on my wife's Jeep, uh, <laughs> if we ever get them. So big backlog in the world of those as well. Yeah. Um, Important to note, folks, we're going to do this again next Monday with a lot of technical jargon. So if you uh, glazed over, fell asleep, woke up, heard something you liked, yep. um, make sure to reach out to us through one of our social media, You know, whether it's Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, the old tweeter, uh, you know, whatever. You can reach out to us directly and you know, ask us questions. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, because it does go up on YouTube the Friday following the live, um, that uh, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the uh, the little bell, get the notifications. We're constantly making content, talking about what's relevant in the Jeep world. Yep. And if you are joining us on one of the new audio platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Facebook Podcasts, so on and so forth, we thank you for being part of us. There's a ton of downloads happening there right now. Which and, is awesome. Which is awesome. Yep. And um, make sure you jump on with the lives where you can talk to us, interact. I see Kevin's finally jumping on. Kevin, we talked about a lot of axle stuff today. <laughs> way to come Way to come to the party late. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, leave us some comments. Reach out to us on our email list and uh, join us in the future. 10, 19 a.m. on Mondays or, again, on YouTube by 8 a.m. on a, the um, – yeah, on YouTube, 8 a.m. on Fridays or any of those cool podcast uh, audio sites. Until then, Jeep family, Jeep on. Jeep on.